The Tuesday, April 16th meeting of the county board is called to order. Are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Uh, yes, it was posted on the 10th of April at 2.15. Thank you. And uh, as, as we all are aware, the uh, flags are at half-mast on the uh, courthouse. And uh, as we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, before the pledge, uh, shall we have a moment of silence? Have the roll call. So much noise about health care, I tuned it all out. With United Healthcare, I get information that matters. My individual health profile, not random statistics. They even reward me for addressing my health risks. So I'm doing fine, but she's still going to give me a heart attack. We're more than 78,000 people looking out for more than 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. Travis in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi there, Travis. I need to know how something can get put on your favorite spot without you putting it on there. So what happened? Horn sight. Mm, you know, the Havana hotties, huh? My wife found it. What have you been doing on that computer, Travis? <laughs> there are 21 supervisors present. Thank you. Uh, would someone move for the approval of the um, March 19th journal, please? Supervisor Winkle. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Lemieux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll support that motion. Dave, Thank you. What are you doing? Just sending a gift. Are there any additions or corrections? Who? Me in the future. All those in favor of approving the journal, a gift to Dave please press so your I button. On things close like the name. Gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave 2037 deserves it. Motion to approve. What are you getting? Passage unanimously. I guess I was thinking Steve 2037 would just fend for himself. Thank you. Next well, consideration of appointments by the county the administrator. Boots. You want to have money in your to future? Aging Unit Advisory Putting Committee, James Gilligan, Traffic Safety account, Commission, Michael Newson, Sheboygan County Transportation Put Coordinating Committee, like Derek Munch. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. Uh, Supervisor Winkle. Hey, let's just hope Steve 2037 doesn't get his Thank hand you, Supervisor Winkle. Because he is going to Supervisor Bemis. I'll second all this three. Is brought to you by the American Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Bemis. And the Ad Council. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book. All those in favor, How press your eye, oppose sometimes me. It's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek. For tonight, partly cloudy and 32. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with rain developing late. Look for a high of 46. From Fox 11, your station for severe weather coverage. <laughs> I'm meteorologist Patrick Powell for News Radio 1330 WHBL. the view of the house. So we tilted the camera down about two degrees, we put that washer on, 
we added the uh, extra pole here, and then we put the directional finder on the top to make it look like it was actually done on purpose. So people now can view on the top of the tower which direction they're looking at. But the result of that, um, we haven't had any complaints since. So if you remember, that was in the paper quite a bit, and uh, folks were uh, really complaining, their, um, and the neighbors. And uh, since that time, that one little washer and a couple other cheap fixes took care of that issue. So that was, that was really the first thing that came to my desk when I was uh, appointed as interim director. Go ahead, Dave. Anybody remember what picket signs have to do with the Planning and Conservation Department? I've given you a few quotes from the, the local papers that uh, give you a hint. All right, boat landings. Go ahead, Dane. Um, at that time, uh, officials hoped that the fees will generate about 30000 per per year. Uh, those officials were Adam and I. I look back at some of the quotes from the paper. Um, the results of that, 2011, um, we uh, garnered 36,000 in fees. 2012 was 39,000 in fees. And um, in, addition, in addition to the little savings account that we've been able to build up to, to help tackle some of the, the boat landing maintenance and things like that, we've been able to establish a new pier at Little Elkhart, a new pier at the Marsh, at the South Ditch. We've dredged Little Elkhart Lake. We've installed a new patrol structure at Yetzer's. And we've done some other various maintenance items, painting privies, lights, keeping the lights on, uh, grading and graveling the parking lots, and a number of vandalism fixes that year we, we go through every year. And I, I put this picture up here. This is my favorite vandalism event. I, I thought it was rather creative. This was uh, some expanding foam in one of the fee boxes. Um, I hope that never happens again because that was a bear to get out of there, but I thought it was uh, rather comical and, and Again, pretty creative, so. Um, boat landing fees. Isn't there a parking fee? <laughs> you, you could call it that, I guess. <laughs> um, this picture here, another uh, sort of controversial item that we've gone through. These are three acres of bogs here at, at the <coughs> marsh. Um, now, in addition to uh, being rather controversial from a financial standpoint, uh, we, we did a drawdown in 2011. And if I could take a, a step back, actually, there is one positive to the bogs out at the marsh. Uh, the top right picture here is actually one of the highway pits at, from the transportation department. And we have to reclaim those pits for uh, they're done being used. So actually, one of the benefits to all those bogs, of those however many tons of bogs they are, is that we're actually reclaiming one of the mining pits with all the, the material from those bogs. So if you move on to the next slide, Dane, um, you guys know these numbers, uh, but the drawdown we did in 2011, 2010, those, that removal was $67,000. Uh, before the drawdown uh, fully took place, $47,000 or $48,000 in 2011. Knock on wood, in 2012, we didn't have any costs after the drawdown. We had the benefit of a, of a drought in 2012 as well, so it acted as a partial drawdown. Um, but thankfully, we have no costs in 12, and hopefully, uh, very to little to no costs in 13. Um, per the management plan we're working on, um, the update of the marsh management plan, uh, we're scheduling the next drawdown in 2017. Uh, the previous plan left it a little open-ended, but the, the, the current recommendation of the plan that will be coming before you uh, before the end of the year is that every five years we do it, no matter what. Um, also, we're working with Ducks Unlimited on a feasibility study out at the, at the marsh right now uh, to look at different ways to control the flashiness of the system out at the marsh, so we have, uh, a, which will result in, in less cattail uh, removal overall. All right, this one's easy. This is to do with the dredging project. But can anybody tell me what the difference between these two pictures are? This is my attempt at a little humor tonight. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing between these two pictures. You can't really see the work of the dredging project, right? So anyway, I guess it wasn't all that fun. <laughs> but you know, besides the great, great cooperation between um, you know all the different agencies that Adam has, has spoken about to you guys before, uh, we had a number of local elected officials, um, and I, I found some rather some of these quotes rather funny that I heard while I was going on tours and and. Uh, uh, different types of meetings with uh, local 
elected officials, Chairman Vanderstein at the time and Jack Van Dixhorn were talking about flamingos at the harbor. Fran was standing on a mound full of snakes. And Adam really wanted to drive a big crane. So moving forward on that, again, that was a great project, but it wasn't without controversy. If you guys remember, we had the airport project that we were proposing to put some of the uh, non-contaminated sediment. Well, really, um, you know, even though the DNR gave us the permit, we worked with the town, ultimately that did come to fruition. And if you switch to the next slide, Dan, I think that was for the betterment of the county. We ended up trucking it out of Sheboygan County, um, so it didn't end up here. We didn't have to worry about the maintenance. And uh, overall, I think that was the right move. Um, you've seen these numbers before too, but 400,000 cubic yards of material since 2006, 2007, with about 300,000 of those coming out last year. That fills up Lambeau Field to about the 45th, 50th row. 42 of the American Orthodontics, or the, the uh, former Thomas Industries building on the south side. About 1,000 tons of debris were removed. Uh, bowling balls was one of my favorite ones. Uh, and one of the benefits is we have uh, one of the deeper harbors now on the Great Lakes. So, um, you know, quite a benefit for our community. I know the marina um, has been getting a lot of calls this year um, from new folks wanting to come to Sheboygan. And perhaps the, the one thing that we've gained from the harbor is we have a new dance. And I'll, I'll end my presentation with this dance. It's the Sheboygan Barge Dance. And if you uh, haven't seen this, it, it's quite something to see. So, moving on. This house here. Unless you're from the town of Mosul, you've probably never seen it before. But we went through, keep going, Dane. Um, what I'm trying to show here is, keep going, Dane, keep pressing it, is the importance of shoreland zoning. Uh, we went through a shoreland zoning update this year, uh, actually early or late 2012, right before the new year. And that could have been somewhat rather controversial. Um, you know, we're affecting people's land and, and whatnot, but uh, through the great work of uh, two of my staff, uh, Matt Marchinski and Catherine Fabian, they brought together a stakeholders group of a number of different uh, entities throughout the, the community, including um, lake associations, uh, builders, building association, um, uh, lake owners, and, and really at the end of the day there was no controversy. We had the public hearing, not one person showed up. We had a number of public open houses, uh, not too many people were showing up. So overall, a uh, very smooth transition to the new ordinance. That was an eight-year effort at the state level to get new language put in place. And at the end of the day, um, in my eyes, it's a much more flexible ordinance for the county's landowners, uh, especially when it comes to legal non-conforming structures. So go ahead, Dave. Um, Supervisor Bemis' uh, favorite subject, as I mentioned, uh, the sanitary ordinance. That's also been uh, uh, updated as of this year. Keep going, Dave. Um, because of the more efficient tracking that we have on our online reporting system, we've been able to reduce fees uh, surrounding that program. Uh, we have higher user satisfaction amongst the, uh, the pumpers and, and the installers. And uh, we've removed a lot of ambiguity that was in, in the previous ordinance. Now, you probably are all aware of where I'm going with this, the non-motorized, but uh, you see the obvious issue here, and thankfully this isn't Sheboygan County, but if you look at the picture, there's another unobvious thing I guess I'll point out. Well, <coughs> maybe I won't. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, there's a couple other things in that picture, but uh, moving on, in 2013, uh, last Friday was a, a big day for Sheboygan County, a $10 million day for Sheboygan County. We have a number of uh, projects that were awarded last Friday, uh, one being the Eisner Avenue project that uh, you've seen in the paper recently. The non-motorized program has about a million dollars into that project. Uh, the Union Pacific Rail Trail, we awarded that project last Friday. That's about a three and a half million dollar project. Um, and then in the Transportation Department, Greg's Department, there was also County OK that was awarded last Friday. And that's about a two, $2.2 million project, I believe. And then in uh, late March, the Sheboygan Falls project, that's about 28 different segments in that community was awarded. So uh, last few weeks have been quite busy and uh, the summer is gonna be quite busy as well. A couple projects last year, just moving on here, uh, 2012, uh, we did some projects out in Plymouth, out near Sargento, at the Quickwiak Athletic Complex, um, County Highway OK, we finished up with Greg's team and also, um, 
countywide bike parking finally to get that project through finally. And then, next slide. Um, over the past few years, it's been about three, four, five projects every summer starting uh, in 2008. So you can see we've spattered a number of projects throughout the county, Random Lake, uh, Plymouth, uh, Cedar Grove, Oosburg, Adel, and now we're starting to move, like I said, uh, into the city of Sheboygan with some of the larger projects that were awarded earlier this week, so, or last week. And then to uh, last slide before I show you the barge dance. A um, couple other things that we've been involved with in our department. Uh, the TNC Watershed Study Grant, it was a $1.6 million grant that the department received uh, from the Kohler Trust for Preservation. Uh, we're working with the Nature Conservancy on, on studying two different watersheds in the uh, county, one being the Otter Creek Watershed and the other being Fisher's, Creek, or Fisher's Watershed up in uh, the town of Herman. And what we're doing there is we're comparing the two watersheds based on treatment in the Otter Creek facility or a watershed versus um, the, the control watershed of Fisher's Creek. And, and it's really to study phosphorus loading into, into our uh, water systems. Uh, we've been through a merger uh, in 2011 and now a reorganization this year. Uh, we've been involved in the T grant. Uh, we'll have uh, annual reporting involved with that grant. That's the grant to reactivate the rail line between Plymouth and Falls. Uh, we have reporting that's due every year for that grant. Uh, we've had the Old Plain Grove reconstruction in 12 and 13. We did a great project out at the Marsh, Day of Care and Rehab project, just uh, downstream of the dam with about uh, with 10 volunteers from the Home Depot. Uh, working with the Friends of the Marsh on a new building and storage facility out at the Marsh. If you've gone out to the Marsh, you can actually push on the storage buildings and move them, so they're in pretty rough shape. Uh, we're working on three different plans right now that will come before you before the end of the year. The Marsh Management Plan update, Farmland Prez Plan, and the Bike Ped Plan update. Uh, we did a congressional briefing. We've improved tree sales the last three years. This year was the best year we've had for tree sales in quite some time. Uh, we applied for and received a grant to hire an Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator for the county. That individual spends about 50% of his time on our inland lakes uh, in the county and then 50% of his time uh, dealing with Lake Michigan. We've done some updates out at Gerber Lake. Uh, we took over the airport wetland mitigation uh, site, uh, which is actually saving the county about 50,000 per year compared to what the private consultants were charging us. And um, we're designing and applying for the permits on behalf of the transportation department for a uh, new wetland mitigation site uh, behind the south side shed. So I guess with that said, you know, what I'd really like to say is thank you for, uh, you know, trusting me with all this great work that we've been able to do. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I can't do it without the support of you. And, and I really appreciate it. And, and, and thank you for the support you've given me over the last three years. And, and again, entrusting me to uh, take care of these things on behalf of the county. So with that said, we'll transition to Dane and, and we'll move on to the next slide. And, you can see the Sheboygan Barge Dance. Now, if you've never seen this before, this happened during <coughs> River Fest. You can go ahead and play it. This was a gentleman who was taking his break, and they had the band going on the south pier. This is my favorite point coming up right here. <laughs> so if you YouTube Sheboygan River Barge Dance, you'll get to see the whole thing. This is only about 20 seconds, so thank you. Great, well, thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Um, my name is Dane Chekolinski. I'm the new director with the Sheboygan County Economic Development Organization. I guess I officially got that title the first of this month, so I'm beginning a new fun chapter for the organization. Uh, I've been with the organization for about two years, and what I wanted to do is, is all of you have an annual report. Next to you, it should come in a big white envelope. This is the report that we give uh, to let everybody know what we're accomplishing, but I wanted to go in a little bit more detail for you because the county has been absolutely fundamental in the creation of this org and its ongoing operations. And first of all, I'd like to start out by saying thank you for all your support so far. And I, I, what I want to do for you is share with you the progress towards our goals, a little bit on the tools that we've used to help accomplish those, 
kind of give you an idea of some other intangibles that we've created, um, give you a small glimpse into our current work, and then finally round it out with, I think, the two largest challenges, the county space and in the next five years when it comes to economic or business development. So um, with that, we'll, we'll take a look at our first slides. About three years ago, the organization was created with two primary goals in mind. The first was to help create or retain 3,500 jobs in Sheboygan County. That's about 5% of our current workforce. Um, to date, actually as of, as, as of January 1st, 2013, these numbers are not reflected of the first quarter of this year, but 2,433 2, jobs have been impacted as a result of our work. Now that is working with projects that are planning to hire that many in the next couple years or projects that we have, companies that we have literally saved from moving out of the community. So it's both attract and retain. And you can see in that slide the number of projects every year. So it's been certainly increasing. We've been getting better and better at what we do. The second one is we set out to help induce $100 million of investment in Sheboygan County. We found that it's much easier to help companies invest than to create jobs. We've actually already reached our five-year goal three years into the organization. So we're very proud of that. Uh, Next slide. Now, how we've done it. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions out there of what, you know, you hear about grants, you hear about incentives, you hear about all these things that businesses can potentially tap into. This right here is, is exactly the tools that we brought to bear on those 20 some odd projects. Some projects have no tools that were brought to bear. They were helped out in other ways. But to give an example, we've helped six companies secure about 1.4 million in loans. We've done about seven tax Wisconsin economic development tax credits for 2.8 million. And then we get into the grants. Now these are, are much more rare today as, as when the WDC was first formed, but performance loans, if they meet the job criteria, those loans are forgiven, about 2.4 million. We've had a land grant of 62,000, a community um, allowed a company to go into an industrial park, basically free of cost. We've done one very large transportation grant, actually one project, but two grants, that was the Plymouth the Cola Rail. And then we've done two workforce training grants for about 76,000. As a matter of fact, this year, that number is closer to 300,000 in the last quarter alone. So um, these are the real numbers that we're bringing value into this county, um, helping companies connect with these both state and federal resources. So for, oh, can you go back one slide? So total impact about 23 million. All this with an organization that spent well underneath a million in operating budget. So we think that's a tremendous accomplishment. Um, go forward. So what, what are some of the intangibles? What have we brought? What, what do we have now today that we didn't have three years ago before the organization was created? And the first is a professionally staffed call center. So when a company has a question about site selection, financial resources, what's out there, they now have somebody to call. And that is, that is our office. And the next, one of the things that we had set out to to do and push by a lot of the municipalities was to get better visibility with our business parks. You know, there's nothing, um, I guess, surprising or shock and awe about economic development. It's just basic common sense. One of the very first things we did and what we found was that if you were looking um, for any sites in the county, you could check the MLS listings on the Century 21, but that wouldn't give you the larger commercial properties. First thing we did was centralize that system. So now we finally have a, a commercial database available on our website where if you want to look for commercial property, you can find it. The second thing what we did was take the business parks in Sheboygan County and list them in a place that brokers actually use. So it, it's not, you know, we're, we're, there's nothing that we do that is, that is magical. It's just good common sense marching towards that common goal of making information easier for companies to find so they can make better, more informed decisions in our community. Next. But finally, I want to give you a small glimpse. Well, one of the last things I'm going to do is give you a small glimpse into our current workload. What, what, what happened? In the last two weeks, these are these examples of projects that have came into our office. Companies, Sheboygan County-based companies, most of these, calling us to help answer these, their questions. First of all, we've had calls from three manufacturing companies in Sheboygan. We've had a call from an office, a, a company looking at setting an office in Sheboygan and a retail in Random Lake. Next. We've had a countywide warehousing search from a very serious uh, individual. 
We've had a call from a company looking to site a manufacturing facility in Plymouth, and we've had a call from a <coughs> potentially good-sized development in the Sheboygan area, just kind of eastern side of the county they're looking at. So um, this is an example of the last two weeks of calls alone. This is what our single service call center has, has created, a lot of activity. Next. So key challenges. What, what do we know that we're facing in the next three to five years in development? Well, the first thing, probably within the next year or two, and the first one is our complete lack of warehousing within the county. We are absolutely out. As a matter of fact, our top three buildings in the county, the largest industrial buildings in the county, have all been contracted and sold or sold within the last month. The former Lear Corporation in Sheboygan, 280,000 square feet, is under contract to be sold. The old Dutchland Plastics Facility in Utsburg, that is, that is underneath land contract to be sold. And the former Torganol Facility in Sheboygan Falls is, will close next month. There has been tremendous activity in the last month on industrial properties, and it has been absolutely fantastic. Next. And finally, <coughs> workforce development. We know that every year we're losing workers. We know that every year more people are retiring in Sheboygan County than people graduating from 12th grade. Those are statistics that do not bode well for our businesses because sooner or later they're gonna stop being able to hire. Matter of fact, I even had a comment, this was no more than a couple months ago from a company in Sheboygan Falls. Their plant manager leaned across the table and told me, thank God Lear Corporation left. I wouldn't be able to stack my plant if it hadn't. We know there's a workforce issue, and we've got to get something done about it. There's some initiatives going on through the chamber, and through some other organizations, I think with some collaborative effort, we can make a large dent in this. So with that, I know that was a very short presentation for an organization that's been in existence for three years, but if anyone has any questions, um, all my contact information is on that annual report. I'm gonna stay to the end, so please, um, you can walk over by me at the end of the meeting. So. Does anyone have any questions about the organization while I'm here? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Next, are there any public addresses? Uh, there are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. from County Supervisor Van Steen, received April 16th, copy of which is on all of your desk. That's received for information. I have resolutions from the Adams, Grant, and Potagany County Boards of Supervisors supporting the same day board registration. Received for information. I have three resolutions from the Adams County Board of Supervisors. The first, opposing set hours for obtaining absentee ballots. That will be referred to the finance committee. The second, opposing placement of uh, election day registration under the direction of the county clerk's office. Refer to finance. And number three, supporting modification of election recount procedures. Refer to finance. <coughs> and I have a resolution from the Brown County Board of Supervisors opposing the state legislature's ability to dictate the amount of local property tax dollars spent on specific county departments. That will be received for information. Next up, I have seven resolutions from the Allegheny County Board of Supervisors. The first, authorizing the Allegheny County lobbyists to request the state legislature re-examine Wisconsin state statute number 968 regarding strip searches and to clarify the language contained therein. That's referred to the law committee. Number two, opposing the state legislature's ability to dictate the amount of local property tax dollars spent on a specific county department. Received for information. Number three, supporting a proposal exempting off-duty officers from current state law prohibiting a licensee from carrying a firearm on school grounds and certain posted private properties. We refer to the law committee. Number four, supporting any proposal extending the time period from 12 to 24 months for a county to seek reimbursement for certain expenses it incurs from 
person sentenced to a county jail. Receive for information. Number five, opposing allowing the Board of Canvassers conducting a recount to determine to conduct the recount of a specific election by hand unless the court orders the recount to be conducted by another method. Refer to finance. Number six, supporting the indication of veteran status on an operator's license or identification card. Refer to Health and Human Services Committee. And number seven, opposing freezing the renewable energy requirements. Receive for information. And I, next, I have a resolution from the Price County Board of Supervisors requesting the Wisconsin Legislature to reconsider State Statute 59 regarding compensation paid to elected officials. That's referred to the appeal HR committee. And finally, I have a resolution from the Wood County Board of Supervisors resolving to seek legislation amending Wisconsin State Statute 843, pre-complaint requirements regarding foreclosed property. Refer to the finance committee. Hey, Mr. Chairman, good evening. Uh, last month, I think I was up here for 45, 50 minutes. I think Mark Winkle would say 53 minutes. Correct. Providing a state of the county, and I have no intention of matching that this evening. In fact, I hope to be very brief. But I do want to remind you that we have our annual leadership forum coming up with the full county board on June 6th. So please make that a priority and plan accordingly. As you know, we're going to be diving into the budget process soon. Uh, this evening, it's my privilege really to recognize some good people. You heard from some good people tonight, and you saw a laundry list of some very good things that have happened in our community. And these good things don't just happen. As you know, it takes people who are committed and dedicated and work extremely hard to make it happen. And I think we all take pride in the very good things that the county board and our organization has been a part of. Uh, tonight, we have three individuals with us who have dedicated a good portion of their lives to help make good things happen in Sheboygan County. And if the chairman and vice chairman could please join me, and if Kay Sipple would please come forward. Kay began her career with Sheboygan County as a CNA at Rocky Knoll in 1975 and continued to work there until this January, 37 years with Rocky Knoll. My wife's a registered nurse. My daughter, Rachel, who's going to be leaving the nest and going to Eau Claire to study nursing, is working at her CNA license right now. And I can't tell you how much respect I have for the profession of nursing and providing that type of care. And Kay, again, 37 years at Rocky Knoll as a CNA. Not only as a CNA, but she apparently was looking for a change of pace at some point. So in 1980, she transferred into the housekeeping area. And then in 1991, into Central Supply. So suffice it to say, Kay wore a number of hats at Rocky Knoll and provided some very, very important service to our residents and the people we care for. In 1993, after being in Central Supply for some time, she decided to go back to housekeeping and remain in that position until she retired. Kay was a go-getter. She always stepped up. She provided assistance as needed. And believe it or not, and, and I find this interesting, Kay, believe it or not, Kay was known as the bird lady to some people at Rocky Knoll. So she took the responsibility of cleaning the aviaries for many years. I mean, these large and closed bird cages and, and being, having a little farm boy. I know not everybody's willing to do that, but she was willing to do so. She'd jump right in there and she'd take care of that. And of course, the residents loved that. And this may surprise you as well. Not only was she willing to do that, but I understand one of your favorite jobs was washing windows. Oh, I love that. So in retirement, <laughs> I think there are all sorts of people who would hire you. <laughs> Very quickly, Kay. In fact, I'm going back to Rocky Knoll to make sure that they're washed this year. Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> we, need, we need that. <laughs> Kay's can-do approach and positive attitude brought out the best in those around her. She took great pride in her work 
and her dedication to the residents showed in everything that she did. Please join me in congratulating Kay Sipple for 37 years of dedicated service to the people she served. This evening because the Bruckbauers are with us this evening and I think most of you know Inspector Bruckbauer. He's been before you before this county board for a number of years but I can honestly say in my 14 years I don't know if I can count on one hand how many times I've seen the Bruckbauers together <laughs> and Nancy Nancy Bruckbauer has worked for Rocky Knoll for 31 years so both of them have dedicated their lives to this community would Mr. and Mrs. Bill and Nancy Bruckbauer, please come forward. <coughs> Nancy, Nancy Bruckbauer began her career with Sheboygan County as a CNA at Sunny Ridge in 1981. Following the sale of Sunny Ridge in 2007, if you stand between the two of us, you're going to be fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Following the sale of Sunny Ridge in 2007, Nancy transferred to Rocky Knoll, like many of our good employees, and continued to provide excellent quality care and compassion to the residents we serve until she chose to retire in January. I never had the opportunity to work with Nancy directly, but I am told she was a role model, an absolute role model, always displayed a positive attitude, always gave 100%. Nancy was tremendously dedicated to the residents she cared for and raised the bar for her co-workers. I understand that she is truly missed by the residents she cared for and her co-workers, and we certainly appreciate her outstanding service and the very, very important work that Nancy did for our residents in her tenure. Please join me in recognizing Nancy Bruckbauer for 31 years of dedicated service to the people of Sheboygan County and wishing her and Bill well. Mr. Bruckbauer. Bill Bruckbauer began his stellar career with Sheboygan County in the Sheriff's Department in 1981. And I just learned recently a graduate from Mooseburg, Mooseburg High School. And I think he told me that, but I forgot that. Uh, during his tenure, Beebe, as many of us fondly and respectfully refer to him, was a dive team leader, a SWAT team sniper, and an instructor. Beebe was promoted to Sergeant of Patrol in 1989. In 1993, he was promoted to Lieutenant of Patrol. In 2001, he was promo promoted to Captain of Patrol. In 2003, Beebe was promoted to the third highest position in the Sheriff's Department, Director of Operations. And finally, in April of 2011, Beebe was promoted by Sheriff Todd Preeby to be our inspector. Pretty impressive. I was fortunate to get to know and work closely with BB as the Sheriff's Department, Director of Operations and Inspector. What always stood out to me was his incredible passion, his commitment, and desire to make improvements. BB did not hesitate to tackle difficult challenges. He took on difficult personnel matters, helped lead organizational changes, and worked with his team, some of which are here this evening, which is kind, to make significant improvements in the detention center. Our corrections division is now recognized as one of the top in the state of Wisconsin. BB also spearheaded the Alternatives to Incarceration program and the programming we have in place, which has allowed us to defer multi-million dollar improvements or an expansion to our detention center. <coughs> However, if one major issue stands out that BB helped lead the charge on, it was his knowledge and efforts in support of combined dispatch. BB did, did his homework, he cared, 
and as we all know, he made a big impact contributing to the county board's recent decision to proceed. What I found endearing about Phoebe, and I imagine I speak for everyone in this room when I say this, whether you agreed with his point of view or not, he is admired by all who had the pleasure to work with him. And I think he's admired by all who have had the pleasure to work with him because of his passion, his humility, his integrity, his respect for others. He always had good intentions and he always had Sheboygan County's best interests at heart. Please stand, please stand and join me in recognizing Inspector Bill Bruckbauer for 32 years of dedicated public service to the people of Sheboygan County. be the last time I stand up here and talk to this body. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of very good memories and it's been a privilege to serve Sheboygan County for all those years. I read an article a couple weeks ago, <laughs> it's one of my spare time now, that uh, dealt with uh, jobs and satisfaction in jobs. And I read the statistic was that only 20% of everybody that has a job is satisfied with the job that they have. I've been very blessed that I've enjoyed every job I've had for the Sheriff's Department. I've enjoyed my career with the Sheriff's Department. I've enjoyed working for the county. It was my dream job. Uh, I have no regrets. I'm gonna, I miss the things I knew I'd miss when I retired. I miss uh, some of the projects we worked on. I miss some of the spirited conversations I had with Supervisor Lemieux, <laughs> Supervisor Gehring. Uh, always respected the people of the board I've, I've been very impressed with the ability of this board to lead this county force in very difficult times. It's a very contentious issues. Wish you all the best of luck as you move forward. Um, I'm sure you will do well. I know the Sheriff's Department is in very good hands with Inspector Wissou and the team that he has around him. Any success I had in my career, most of it is, is basically because of the team that surrounded me. Without those players behind me, they helped me get there, I would have never gotten there. I also have to thank my wife who managed to keep me on the straight and narrow and out of trouble for 31 years. How she did that is a miracle. With that, that's all I have to say. I thank you again, and hopefully we'll see each other outside socially. Thank you.
Thank you. Supervisor Murphy. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, press your eye button and vote for me. Motion is carried unanimously. I'm sorry, I read the wrong number. It's 20 I and 1 A. Uh, resolution number 32. To be the executive committee to was prepared resolution 32 regarding amending the Sheboygan County Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation and Open Space Plan 2012. Have considered the same and recommend the resolution be adopted. Respectfully submitted the 16th day of April 2013. Supervisors to Street, Wagner, Darian, and McKenzie. Supervisor Darian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 32. Thank you. Supervisor Adler. Second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, press your eye button. Who is in here? Now this motion is carried unanimously. Resolution number 33. The Executive Committee to Ms. Prairie Resolution 33 regarding appropriating funds for participation in East Wisconsin County's Railroad Consortium 20, uh, 2013. I have considered the same and recommend the resolution be adopted. Respectfully submitted the 16th day of April 2013. Current Supervisors to Street, Wagner, Deering, and Mackenzie. Supervisor Deering. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 30. Thank you. Supervisor Winkle. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, press your eye button. Oppose the name. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. I will pass the bill to Vice Chairman White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, resolutions to be introduced. Resolution number one. Uh, regarding reaffirming membership in the Bay Area County's Workforce Consortium. That will be referred to the Human Resources Committee. Resolution number two. Uh, regarding authorizing issuance and uh, issuance and sale of uh, nine million seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars worth of general obligation funds. That will be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number three. Participating in Snowmobile AIDS Program 2013. They'll be referred to the Finance Committee. Now for ordinances to be introduced. Ordinance number one. <coughs> Regarding creating alternate procedures for parking violators. They'll be referred to the Finance Committee. Supervisor Bemis. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Lemieux. I'll second that motion, Mr. Thank you, Supervisor Lemieux. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay.